Hello everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for another opportunity he has given to us to be able to fellowship together and break the bread of life together. And you and I know that this bread of life will break regularly on this channel is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, quick two announcements quickly before we hit the ground running as usual. Um, first of all, I, I like to say to you uh, that if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. Go to YouTube, type Apostle Victor James and press the subscription button. I'll be so encouraged and glad to the glory of God that you've done that. Alrighty? You know, we have, we have loads of teachings there. Loads of teachings that will be a blessing to you and to your loved ones. Now, second announcement. The Lord has given me grace to be able to um, mentor ministers, apostles, teachers, prophets, bishops, evangelists, you know, deacons, deaconess, whatever it is that you do in the body of Christ, even an elder or choir person, whatever you do. And then to provide spiritual covering. You know, it's unfortunate that a lot of people, especially this generation, does not understand the, the place of spiritual covering in this world of wickedness, corrupt world. The Bible calls this world corrupt, corrupt world, a world of wickedness, spiritual wickedness. So God raised people, men and women, places grace upon them to provide and use them to provide spiritual covering for his people, you know. That's what Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 says. You know, they watch for your souls. Glory be to God. Now, <clears throat> because of this responsibility that the Lord has given to me, we, um, I passed up a minister's fellowship. You know, uh, uh, it's called AVJ, Jesus Gospel Minister's Fellowship. And we meet twice, every two Mondays in a month. Every two Mondays in a month, you know, um, and um, it's by 10 a.m. For those of you who are in Lagos, anywhere in Lagos, you can meet us in number 62 Oluwag Bebe Street, off Shasha Road, Olugufe Bus Stop, Akonwajo, right here in Lagos. But if you are not in Lagos, anywhere you are in the world, wherever you are in the world, you can still be part of it, you know, because we, we tell it. We broadcast it live. We broadcast it live to all my sons and daughters and everybody so that everybody can hook up wherever you are. Now, if you want to get the next date of our fellowship, the next Monday date of the ministers, AVJ Jesus Gospel Ministers Fellowship, if you want to get the next date to be a part of it, pray and let the Lord tell you. If the Lord wants you to come under this mentorship and spiritual covering, you got to be a part of it. It will help you, you know. If you want to get the next day, this is the phone number right here. Apostle Victor James, plus 234-803-07-18006. Plus 234-803-07-18006. You can call and they will tell you the next Monday date for the fellowship. And you'll be amazed to meet all kinds of ministers and brethren as we come together to fellowship to the glory of God the Father. All right, I love you and God bless you. <clears throat> Amen. So let's hit the ground running right now. Praise God. Thank you, precious Jesus. Um, as we see the day, the Bible said, as we see the day approach, as we see the day of the Lord Jesus, what I mean the day of the Lord Jesus, the second coming of Jesus, the rapture. Of course, there, a lot of people argue that there is no word like rapture, rapture in the Bible, but there is the word called caught up. We shall be caught up into the air to meet the Lord Jesus. You know, so as we see the day approach, get closer and closer. <clears throat> None of us is expected to be found idle. You shouldn't be found idle. idle. The Bible, Jesus said in the book of Mark 24, he said, blessed is that servant whom when his master comes, he shall find doing. That means nobody should be idle. Nobody should be doing nothing in Zion, in church, in the body of Christ. You must get busy. 
you must be engaged. You must be doing something for the Lord. You must be doing something in the kingdom of God. He said, the writer of the book, the writer in the book of Ecclesiastes says, he said, Word to him that is at ease in Zion. Isaiah said the same thing. You can't be idle in Zion, in church, in the body of Christ. You must be engaged. You must be doing something. There is none of us that God has not given the gift or the ability to be able to contribute to the body of Christ. None. We all have gifts as it differs and abilities. Alright, so let's start with this. In Romans chapter 12, the Bible said from verse number 6. Romans 12 from verse number 6. Because if you are not doing anything, if you are not engaged, doing something for God or the kingdom of God in the body of Christ, I'm very sorry to say to you, you will find you will, you, will, you will eventually have to have leave a for us. Now, the Bible said in Romans in chapter 6, verse, I mean chapter 12. Put chapter 12, verse 6, please. Wow, I like this, your background. Beautiful. Romans chapter, maybe you should make this yellow white, you know, to even make it more beautiful. But I like it anyway. Romans chapter 12, verse 6. It said, having then gifts, as it differs, differing according to the grace that is given to us. Maybe you should put this in NIV for me, please. You know, glory be to God. Let's, let's, let's cut this thing quickly. You know, we, we all have gifts. Look at it. We have, he said, we have gift, different gifts. There is no body that is born again, a member of the body of Christ believer in Christ Jesus, a child of God, that God did not at the day of your salvation give you a specific gift. Now that gift you are given, it's not quote and unquote just for your enjoyment of course, it will minister to you as well, but it is for the benefit of the body of Christ. It is for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Watch this. He said, we have different gifts according to the grace given unto us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion of his faith. Next verse. Verse 7 says, put verse 7 please. Watch verse 7. Glory be to God. He said, if your own gift it is serving, if it is serving, he said, let him serve. Use it. Serve. He said, if it is teaching, like I'm doing, he said, let him teach. And I'm doing mine. Next verse, verse 8 says, let's go to verse 8, please. He said, if it is encouraging others, if you have a gift to encourage others, to encourage people, he said, let him, en let him do it. Use your gift. Be an encourager. Make sure nobody meets you without being encouraged. He said, if it is contribution to the needs of others. That, you know, he said, contribute. Now he goes on to say, let him give generously. That means some people are giving the gift to give. That's why every time they engage themselves in giving, parting with something to others, they feel fulfilled, they feel joy inside. They feel fulfilled. They feel joy inside. And the reason God blesses us is not necessarily to acquire and accumulate wealth and material things. No. It is for us to use as, I mean, to be able to service the gift that we have. To exercise our gift. He says, so am I giving the gift of leadership. He says, let them govern diligently. He says, so am I giving the gift of showing mercy. Just kindness. He said, let them do it cheerfully. There is none of us without a gift. Now, if you follow the pattern of the world, because the world hates God, the world is anti-God, anti-Christ. It's anti-anything the kingdom of God. Because all the world is after is the lust of the flesh. You see that? That's all the world is after. Self. 
That's why you see a lot of ladies today, all they are busy doing is enhancing their body. They are cutting their bumps, uh, their boobs. They are cutting and doing all kinds of uh, uh, butt surgery. They are doing surgery in their neck, their eyes, their nose, their ears, their breast, their backside. Because the Bible said in towards the end of the time, as Jesus is coming approaches, men will be men and women will become lovers of their physical self. That's all they will concentrate on. Lovers of their physical self. And it's very unfortunate because this evil is cre uh, gradually creeping into the church. What everybody wants is about themselves. What do I get? What do I have? What will I eat? What will I do? What will, what will I take? What will I, you know? So people are becoming greedy. And another word for greed in the New Testament, as a matter of fact, in the epistle, is idol. Worshipping of an idol or idol worship. Once you become greedy, you are no longer satisfied with what you have. You are not reaching out for the benefit of the purpose of the goodness of God, for the kingdom of God, according to the gift that he has given to you. So, look at what Jesus said. Let's take it from here. Look at what Jesus said. Because you have to be kingdom minded. Nobody is going to live here on earth forever. Everybody is on a journey. The Bible said in Hebrews 11 that the men and women that lived before us, they had this mindset that they were on a journey. That this world was not their permanent abode. And today, where are they? They've gone. So you and I are the ones now on this same journey. On this same path. But look at what Jesus said. In John chapter 9 verse 4. This is the Lord Jesus talking about himself and basically talking about us. You and I, believers, Christians in Christ Jesus. Look at it. In John chapter 9, verse 4. In the King James Version, he says, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me. That means there is specifically an assignment attached to Jesus for coming into the world. I must work the works of him that sent me. Why I came into the world. While it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Now even though Jesus was talking about himself. I believe very strongly in my heart. That this same verse. Is referring to you and I. How do I know that? The night Jesus is talking about. <laughs> it's a night that happens to everybody. Night will happen to you. Night will happen to me. Night happened to Jesus. Night happened to the apostles. Now the day is the opportunities you have to serve, to use your gift. Not just for humanity, which is okay, but for the advancement of the kingdom of God. The gift God gave you, you must be able, you should be able to identify it and then apply yourself Using those gifts or that gift for the purpose of advancing the kingdom of God. Because the night is coming when you can't walk. You know, if you go to churches, you know, different churches all everywhere. You know, everybody is praying, oh God, give me a long life. I want to live 120 years. I want to live and be up to 90 years or 100 years. You see people pray, long life. Father, and then the man of God, uh, the apostle or the prophet or the Jew, everybody say, pray that the Lord will give you long life. I see God giving you long life. Now, I was discussing with somebody, a friend of mine today. You know, he's a bishop. I said, you know, I I'm sorry to use this word. I got to use it. It is stupidity for anybody to pray for long life. I'm telling you. It may come across very harsh. It may come across as a strong word. But it's the truth. It is stupidity for anybody to pray for long life. What are you praying for long life for? Long life to do what? Long life. You want to live long to what purpose? You got to ask yourself that before praying for long life. Now, does that mean that every other person who has died now didn't pray for long life or they prayed for long life and God did not hear them 
I know of some bishop, men whose heart are after the things of God, that loves God, and were serving. They just died. One of my friends just died. Of course, it's a, it's a known uh, this thing all over the world. Pastor Deboe, a great man of God, a man called and anointed by the Lord himself. You know, his son, he lost his son. His son is gone. Now, you mean to tell me that he didn't pray for his son or his prayer does not cover his children? Of course, he does. Everybody has their night. When your night will be, when my night will be, I don't know. As a matter of fact, the Bible said, those who have died and have gone, he said they have escaped the corruption that is in this world. The, those ones have escaped. They've escaped. So you see, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter the kind of prayer. If you like, pray from now till do dry fasting. Dry. Don't drink water. Don't eat. Don't drink water. For the next hundred days that you want to live long, it does not guarantee you living long. I'm about to say something very important. God is not interested in anybody right now living long. God is not interested in anybody living long. Show me in the scripture where God is interested in you living long. There's nothing like that. Even Jesus, our Lord and Savior, lived for only 33 years. And guess what? It was to accomplish, to fulfill, to, 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 to finish the work that the, the assignment the Father gave him. And so Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. God is not interested in you living long. What kind of living long? If there is anybody that is supposed to live long, even longer than Methuselah, it should be Jesus Christ. Because God accepts all of us in Christ. He said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. If his beloved son, in whom he is well pleased, lived for only 33 years, you are wasting your precious time praying for long life. All those night VG, Holy Ghost night, you are going and you are praying, oh God, give me long life. It's a waste of time. God does not hear and answer such prayers. Now, why is this so? God's agenda, God's assignment for you is tied specifically to God's purpose for your life. And that's why he gave you gift. That's why God gave you grace and the gift of that grace. As long as you are serving God's purpose for you, you will be alive. He will keep you alive as long as that purpose of his needed to be serviced. So I said, no, I don't agree. I don't, what do you want? What, you don't agree. You don't agree about what? No, I don't understand. What is it you don't agree? Haven't you seen people that had car accident and they died? Some people have cancer. Just one small cancer, they died. So there's nothing like you don't agree. When you find your purpose with God, your the reason you were sent into this world, the reason you are a member of the body of Christ, the reason you are a child of God, you are born again. God took you out from the kingdom of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. Once you discover it, the gift of the grace of life will set into motion for you. To fulfill that purpose, the reason I'm alive it's not because I prayed and, oh God, let me be alive at my age. No. I am serving the will, the purpose of God for my life. The Bible said that David, having served the will of God for him, for his generation, Having served it, he served God's will, God's purpose for his life, for his generation. He said after he did that, then David slept. The one slept, then he died. Are you seeing that? <laughs> I know that this is coming as a shocker. It's coming as a shocker. So Jesus said, whether you like it or not, the night will come. The, the night does not take uh, excuse from anybody. Neither does he beg anybody to come or not to come. The night will come. But as long as your life is serving God's purpose for the reason you were brought into the kingdom of God, he will keep you alive. He will keep you going. So the Bible said in Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. Thank you Lord Jesus. So if the gift you have is to serve a man 
is to be useful to somebody. Keep serving that man. Because in serving the man, life will open to you. That's the gift he gave you. A lot of people are confused and suffering. Their life is closed up. You know why? They have not discovered the purpose to which God gave them a gift. Look at this. He said, and David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, he, he, uh, David fell on sleep. That means he died. He was sleep there. means he died. You know, the Bible does not use the word die for us. Because Christians, children of God don't die. We just transit. We move from our body and we continue. He said, whether we are in the body or outside of the body, we belong to Christ. He said, David, that's what the Bible said. After he had served his own generation by the will of God, God's will for David, the reason David was born in that generation was to be a prophetic psalmist. That's why the psalm of David, the psalms of David were all prophetic describing the Christ. So that when the Christ comes, when the real person that is the Christ shows up, we can look at what David said, wrote, prophetically to judge whether the man is truly the Christ or is a, uh, or is a phony, is a fake, is a false person. You know? So David wrote there, whoever, the person that will be the Christ will suffer. He will not only suffer, he will be mocked, he will be rejected, he will he will be scourged. He will eventually go to hell. As a matter of fact, his re redemption will be by him. And when Jesus came as the Christ, we needed to check whether Jesus is truly the Christ. So we go to the book of Psalms. We go to the book of Isaiah. We go to all the books of the Old Testament. And then we read to see that Jesus actually fulfilled. He fitted into those prophetic declarations. Are you seeing that? So after David had served his generation according to God's purpose and will for his life. The Bible said then he died. That's when David died. Don't live an idle life. Don't live, don't, don't, don't even think of it. Don't live an idle life. Don't live a life of nothingness in the body of Christ. Don't go into eternity with eternal regrets. You must serve God's purpose, God's will for this, your generation. Don't let anger, offense, and they, I don't like the way you talk to me. I don't like what they did to me. That's why I'm not going to that fellowship again. You know, that's why I'm not coming again. I don't, the way, they, the way they, they look at me, the way they talk to me, the way they are talking about me. If you allow what people say or do to you to deter you from being where God wants you to serve, whether as an encourager, Maybe, maybe, who knows whether you are supposed to be in our fellowship to be encouraging us. And then you got offended and, I, 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 and you, are, you are angry. And you left. Huh. I feel sorry for you. Jesus said, blessed is that servant whom when his master will return back, will find him doing. He will be doing what he was given as a gift to do. Because we are all passing away gradually. At this my age, the rest of the year ahead of me is shorter than the ones that I have lived. But there was a time that I was 18 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old. As at that time, the years ahead of me were longer than the ones I have lived. But look at me now. You and I, like it or not, we are ready for it or not. The night Comet, when no man can walk. <laughs> so look at Galatians chapter six, chapter six, verse verse ten. Look at the book of Galatians chapter six, verse ten. Thank you, precious Father. Galatians chapter six, verse ten. It says, "As we have therefore opportunity." So what God does? This God is too wise. He gave us gifts. But by himself, he created opportunities. There are opportunities for you to exercise your gift, your calling. For you to advance God's purpose for your life. There are opportunities. 
He said, as we have therefore opportunity. That means, as you are going on in life, conscious of the kingdom of God and the gift of the grace of God upon your life, opportunities will open up to you to exercise that gift. Whether you are ready for those opportunities or not, God will make sure they, op they open up. They show up. You know? If you are married, it's an opportunity for you to serve your spouse, to serve your husband, to serve your wife. You know, some, some women, you know, they say, all they see in their husband is the bad thing he has done, how he's not good, the things the thing he has done, this, he's not he's doing that. He's, he, he. What you don't understand is that you are called to be a helper. Help meet. You are, you are his help to meet his need where he's lacking. Exercise yourself in it. The time is going. Time is going. Your night is coming. The devil has blinded you. Open your heart and mind. Serve him. You know, a friend of mine, this friend of mine that I was discussing with today on the phone said something to me. He said, Apostle, uh, there's, there's this uh, uh, lady and her husband in their church. He said, the, the lady, uh, very, you know, troublesome, kept troubling the man. And they are very rich. They, 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 they are well to do. You know, he said they have, uh, I think, like uh, eight houses in different places. You know, I mean, that's to tell you they are, they are well to do. And these houses are not just cheap houses, they are, you know, big buildings. You know, I don't want to use the word mansion, but big buildings. You know, you know what I mean by that? You know, <clears throat> he said, but the wife is always, you know, at the throat of her husband, giving him problem, trouble, you know. So several occasions, the man has, you know, tried to, to run away, you know. The woman, very troublesome. Always, and when they ask, what is going on? What is the thing? She will always say, the husband is a bad person. The husband is this. The husband is that. The husband has not done this for her. As, you know, uh, she, she expected that he should do this. He didn't do that. And blah, 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 blah. You know. So this, my friend, said he later called the husband. What is going on? Why don't you... What's happening, you know, what's all this? You guys need to, you know, mend fences and, you know. The husband now opened up to this, my friend, the pastor. Guess what? He said he's owing bank nine billion naira. Nine billion is owing bank. He said, but he can't tell the wife. Because the wife is always... You have not done this. You are, you, what's this? Blah blah blah. You know you are, uh, you are you are you are you are chasing women. You are doing this. You are do, you know. So he, he said he, he has nobody to share the thing with. He said, so he keeps piling it in his heart. He can't come back home to discuss with his wife because this woman always look for fault and problem and misunderstanding. He said and he is always providing for the house. The children are abroad in school. He sent she to goes on holidays abroad, you know, but she's never grateful, you know, at least to say thank you. He's always demanding and looking for more and then finding fault with him. So the husband now told the pastor, Is it right now? As at that time, he has heart problem because the bank are disturbing him. And the business is not doing well. So, he, but he's, too, he's, he's putting his effort because he, he has to make more money for, for the family to do X, Y, Z. Anyway, to cut the long story short, the man woke up in the morning to go into the bathroom. He slumped and died. He just slumped and died. On the spot, as he landed on the floor, he died. Guess what? Banks showed up. Collected all the houses. They took all the houses. It was as at that time the wife knew the husband was owing a, a billion. I mean, did I say a billion? Nine billion naira. Nine billion. The husband was owing. 
because of all the investment he did. Guess what? Banks took over all the houses immediately. They brought, they brought police. Ejected everybody. Now the children are stranded and brought back to Nigeria. She herself now, she has no place to stay. So who is she going to be fighting? The night cometh for everybody. If you do not exercise your gift to serve the one God has given you to, to serve, when your night comes, God forbid, you will be filled with regret. All you will know will be regret. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Now all those people that used to come around them, love them, you know, visit them, everybody has gone. They've all disappeared. Because they had their own issues themselves to take care of. Now she's lonely. She's miserable. Uh, she, she, she wants to even die. She wants to commit suicide now. Use every opportunity you have to do good, to serve, to advance the cause of God for your life. If your own gift is to be a peacemaker, be a peacemaker. If your gift, ayangada, yendege, abrosa, gretuyaga, this is, a, this is one of the most challenging parts for this generation. If your gift is to be a financial supporter of the work of God, stop grumbling and complaining. Give support. You know, this, this generation hates to give money to the work of God. This, I'm telling you, this generation hates it. And it is because there are all kinds of demonic spirit that has been unleashed on this generation to stand in hatred against financing the work of God. Look, the gospel is very expensive to spread. The Bible said even the one that goes to spread the gospel must be sent. He said for no man goes at his own expense. He must be sent. There is no soldier of any nation. That the, soldier, that the nation is at war and that soldier now sent himself at war against a nation trying to fight his own nation. That soldier will not survive it. That's why the Bible said no man go to war at his own expense. Even God does not send anybody as, either as, a, as an apostle, as a teacher, as an evangelist, as a prophet, as a bishop, as a pastor, at his own expense. That's why God gave gifts to others so as to support him. Even Jesus, in the book of Luke 8, the Bible said when Jesus gathered his disciples, you know, Jesus was sponsored by women and men. As a matter of fact, one of the the women whose husband was doing very well, you know, the, the, the husband's name is uh, Chuba, Suzanne, or Susanna. The husband works as the treasury minister, the minister of finance to Herod. That's to tell you, that's a big shot. That's a big guy. She takes, the Bible says she takes of her own substance to sponsor Jesus, to finance Jesus and his disciples. I'm telling you, Suzanne, check, check it out in, in Luke, I think Luke 8. You know, this generation just hates to, to make them to make itself available to financing the kingdom of God. You would rather go and carry a prostitute. Give the prostitute money than to sponsor the gospel. I'm talking about Christians. Believers. Abomination. You would rather buy the latest cars. The latest wristwatch. The latest shoes. The latest human hair. You would rather spend money to do any other thing apart from sponsoring the gospel. Apart from sponsoring a genuine minister of the gospel of God. Of Christ. It is evil. I'm pained because this generation is on a free fall in the direction the devil is taking it. Look at it in Luke 8, verse 3. Look at it. And Johanna, the wife of uh, Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, 
and many others which ministered unto him in the, with their substance in NLT translation or GNT translation. Look, put, put it. Uh, a lot of ministers are, are just using money. They're just collecting people's money and doing whatever they like. Look, there is no profession where there people do not, you don't have people who abuse the profession. Is it police? There are so many useless police people. That's why they are killing innocent people. Is it lawyers? There are so many useless lawyers who just go collect money from people and don't do nothing. Is it doctors? There are so many doctors killing innocent people. Because I, I heard of a doctor that forgot scissors in the stomach of his patients and sew the stomach back. So there is no profession. Is it judges? There are so many corrupt judges that they, all they, they, their judgment depends on the highest bidder who can give them the, the greater bribe. So there is no profession. Is it pilot? Look at the in, uh, Malaysia or, or in, uh, 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 aircraft that, cra that crashed. The pilot was high on drugs and kill all those uh, hundred and something people. There is no profession where you don't have men and women who abuse that profession. So the same thing. There are some pastors who abuse their office as a pastor. Some apostles, some bishops, some prophets who just lie just to get money from people. But that does not remove the fact that Jesus, God still has his own men, his own women, that must be financed, supported, helped financially. Look at this. He said, Johanna, whose husband, chooser, was an officer in Herod's court, and Susanna, and many other women who used their own resources to help Jesus and his disciples. Jesus was God Almighty that was living in a body as 100% man. He still needed people to support him financially. There were people who were supporting Jesus financially. If you are not supporting the gospel, if you are not financing and supporting a man of God, something is wrong with you. I'm telling you something is wrong with you. The reason God gave you a job, the reason God gave you that business you are doing, it's not just for you and your family to go on vacation, on holiday, which is okay. It is for you to be able to finance a man, a woman, somebody that is called by God to preach and propagate the gospel, to teach the gospel. The gospel is very expensive. If you are not supporting a minister, hiya, you should be pitied. You should be pitied. The Bible said in Acts of the Apostles, there was an Ethiopian finance minister. Ethiopian Enoch. He was a finance minister. A Gadaba. He was not even born again. But the Bible said he was always giving. Colonius was, al Colonius was always giving. He said his arms, his giving, came up to God. And God remembered his arms, his giving. Colonius was a giver. God remembered it. And because of that, God sent an angel to one man and told the angel, tell him, that there's somebody called, excuse me, there's somebody called Peter. Send for him. He is at so and so place. He said, when Peter comes, he will tell you what to do so that you may be saved. So that when you die, you don't go to hell. Just because the man was a giver. You see, we live in a generation that is so powered with revelation and knowledge that the knowledge and revelation has become an obstacle to them. And this is not new. It, it, it happened in the time of Paul. The church at Corinth, the Bible said they were filled with knowledge. Oh, yeah. Too much revelation, too much knowledge. Before you talk, they will complete the thing for you. Before you quote anything, they will complete it for you. Look at it. Let me show you. But their problem was giving. They hate to give. The church at Corinth, ah, they are bloody stingy people. Terrible, terribly stingy. Let me show you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 7. Put 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 7. You know, you will see people go to club. 
they will buy one bottle of wine for one million naira. But then they will be offended and angry to support a genuine minister, a genuine man of God, financially, to preach and to dispense the gospel. Watch this. Therefore, this is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. The Corinthian church. He said, therefore, as you are bound in everything, in faith, the word abound means these guys, their faith is very high. Woo! They are very, this church, this Corinthian church, powerful faith. He said, in utterance, forget to when it comes to prophecy. You can't beat them in prophecy. They can't prophesy. Accurate prophecy. He said, and in knowledge, aya. no. They know Bible too much. The church at Corinth, they know revelation. They know grace. They know the word of grace. They know the ministry. They know the ministration. You can't deceive me to collect money from me. They know all of that. And all diligence. And in your love for us. God said, but see that you are bound also in this grace. There is another grace that this church at Corinth don't have. They don't operate in. There is a particular grace they don't operate in. They have grace. They operate in all kinds of grace. Faith, prophecy, or prophesying, knowledge, everything. I'm telling you. But Paul said, look, with all this that you have, that you are bound in, in everything, there is a grace you need to operate in. You church at Corinth. There is a grace you need to operate in. Because they are behaving like wicked people. So, what grace is that grace? Go to verse 1. Let's take from verse 1. Chapter 8, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Look at, look at what Paul is trying to tell them. Moreover, brethren, you see, the same chapter. I want you to know, that we do you to, I want you to know, the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. That means there's another church, another group of people. They are the Macedonian church. He said, I want you to know the kind of grace they are operating in. This church at Macedonia, I need the, this grace. This is the church in Greece. I need you to know the kind of grace they are operating in. Look at verse 2. Put verse 2. He said, how that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. You know what Paul is saying? Look, you church at Corinth, go and copy the grace of the church at Macedonia. Those guys, they have child, people are persecuting them. They are under fire and attack because they are Christians. And they don't have anything. They are poor people. He said, but with their poverty, their own poverty is not just poverty. It's a deep type of poverty. With their deep poverty. He said, one thing you can't take away from them, the grace they have, is that they were so generous. Generous. They are givers. They are gener their poverty did not stop them from their liberality. Verse 3. Put verse 3. Thank you, precious father. Put verse 3. He said, For to their power, I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. These guys were givers. But the church at Corinth, is a type and shadow of the church of this uh, this this generation that think that they know too much. Ah, who you, I mean, I'm too wise. Oh. I won't let any man of God collect my money. I won't let any church take my money. Ah, can you come and come and use trick for me? Now, some people will now say, Ah, this one Apostle James is preaching now. He's just using an idea. He wants to collect our money. How much do you have? How much do you have? How much do you have that they want to collect? That was the problem with the church at Corinth. They had too much knowledge, but they were stingy people. They are the only ones Paul had to write to that God loves a cheerful giver. The church at Corinth. Because they are so stingy. All they just wanted to do is to take care of themselves. When it's time to take communion, they go and bring wine and get drunk. Very selfish people. They had lost control of the reason for them being in the body of Christ. They lost control. But on the other hand, look at the church at Philippi. Oh! Look at the church at Philippi. The Philippian church. 
That is, let's go there. Let's go to the church of Philippians in Philippians chapter 4. In verse from verse 16. NLT translation, Philippians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Look at the church at Philippi. Agora Zaba Zagadiaga. Egro Dagosa. If you allow if you allow any genuine man of God. Any genuine servant of God who is teaching genuine message of the gospel of Christ, if you allow him to suffer financially, if you allow him to suffer financially, and you know you have the resource, no matter how little, to assist him, believe me, believe me, you have done yourself bad. You have done yourself evil. When we meet with Jesus. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you the truth before God Almighty. I'm just trying to wash my hands off your blood. You know why? There is nothing in this world. That you and I will take out of this world. There is a ban. From God. It's a spiritual and eternal ban. Nobody takes anything physical. Out of this world. When they are going out. Do you know? <laughs> To the point that God is so serious about the fact that we came naked, we will take nothing out. We came with nothing, we will take nothing out. Including your physical body, your flesh. You will not take it out of this world. That's why when a person dies, you know what they will say? Dust back to dust. Earth back to the earth. You won't take it out of this world. So stop living deceived. Don't live deceived. Look at this. He said, when I was in Thessalonica, you this church at you this church, you this Philippian church, you sent help more than once to me. They kept sending help to Peter uh, to Paul. Anywhere Paul was, these guys would contribute and send finance to Paul to assist him, to help him, to help him keep spreading the gospel. How many times have, has my teaching been a blessing to you? How many times have you listened to my teaching? And without me playing gimmicks, you can you sincerely say that you have honestly supported us financially? And yet, some, some, some people send me a message, Oh God, Apostle, if you see the way this your message, you know, bless me. This thing met me at the right time. You cannot squeeze out something to help us financially. To support us financially. Why, why is your heart that closed? What happened to your conscience? The Bible says you must not muzzle the ox. That tread out the corn. Don't do it. Don't muzzle the ox that tread out. That, that some ministers are wasting money. And showing off and doing all kinds of things. Does not mean you should not support genuine ministers. They had the church at Philippi. The Philippian church kept saying, as a matter of fact, uh, go to verse 15. Let's start from verse 15. Watch, watch from verse 15. Look at, he said, as you know, you Philippians, specifically Paul is talking to the church at Philippi. He's not talking to the church at Corinth. Because the church at Corinth, they are stingy and wicked people. All they just wanted is revelation. Ah, teach us true. This man, this man has revelation. This man can teach. Ah, this man, this man had knowledge, you. But after you have heard the revelation and teaching, why don't you send an offering? Why don't you send something? No matter how small, why don't you send? For conscience sake, the Bible said if a man has taught you the word of God, share what you have with him. Look at this. He said, and as you know, you, Philippian, you Philippians, we are the only ones. Ah! You were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the gospel, the good news, and then traveled on from Macedonia, no other church did this. Look at it. This is Bible yourself. I'm not telling you what I think. This is Bible. As you know, you Philippians, you were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news, the good news is the gospel. When I preached the gospel to you. And then traveled on from Macedonia. No other churches did this. 
There are some of you who have been listening to my teachings. And my teachings have been a great blessing to you. I am bold to say to you now. It is a pity. It is very unfortunate that you have never taught it once. To send me financial help. To, to give offering. To give. Why do, why, why, why do you have to close your conscience? All you want is a teaching that will just help you, encourage you, be a blessing to you, or you have understanding, you are growing, but you are not giving. It costs us money to come on air like this and to spread this thing. We spend money. We spend money. That's why we are asking you to give. You know, some people now will get angry and they, they won't watch again. Or they will send me all kinds of comments. You know, this man is just looking for money by all means. He's just looking for money. Ah, look at the way he's talking about money. You know, look, let me tell you. Your night is coming. Your night. You will not have opportunity to give again. All these people now, whether the church at Philippi, the, the Philippian churches, or the Macedonian church, or the church at Corinth, all of them are dead. They are gone. No opportunity for them to give again. Whatever it is that they have done is the one that they will take along with them. That's what Paul said. Look at it now. He said, he said, as you know, you Philippians, you were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the gospel and then travel on to Macedonia. He said, no other churches. That means the church at Corinth were wicked to Paul. Now it goes on in verse 16. Put quickly, put verse 16 quickly. He said, even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. They kept sending help. Some of you are tired already. After you gave once, you don't want to give again. Don't let the devil use your needs to lie to you. He said, your heavenly father knows what you have need of before you will ever ask him. Or before your need became a need to you. Don't let your need dictate you applying yourself in being useful to the kingdom of God. Don't let your need do that. Don't do that. Next verse, verse 17. Look at verse 17. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Paul said, I'm not saying it because I want a gift. Even though he needs it, he said, but the, the idea is not because I need it. He said, rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. The day we meet with Jesus, there is going to be a reckoning <laughs> that's what the Bible said in Galatians 6 in verse 9 he said you should never be weary of doing good don't stop don't stop if you have been supporting us helping us financially don't stop don't stop don't join the group of people who think that everything in this life starts and ends with this life that's a lie that's a lie that's a lie there is another life. There is another existence beyond this physical, material world. And when your night comes, when my night comes, you and I will exit this world. And suppose the uh, Apostle James, you are trying to scare us to bring that money. Yes. What, what else can you say again? I've answered you now. Yes, I want you to be scared. I want you to be afraid to bring that money to help us. Because you don't want to respond to the kindness and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what do we do now? We scare you into doing it. What else can you say now? <laughs> Some of us are sent by God with the purpose of pure gospel without manipulating people. Without deception. Those of us who are sent genuinely with the gospel, we need your financial help. I'm going to give everybody opportunity right now, if you are hearing me. Use your device. Send us financial help. We need your help financially. I need your help financially. If you like, call me all kinds of names. Abuse me. Say all kinds of things. about. I don't care. It doesn't really bother me. But I'm telling you, I need your financial help for the sake of the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, this teaching needs to go to all churches. Every pastor, every apostle, every evangelist, every bishop, every apostle, 
need to share this thing. Let it go viral. The church needs to wake up. Don't follow the trend in the world. The world is passing away. The world is passing away. The reason we are here is for the purpose of the gospel of Christ. Anything outside the gospel, Sefini, there's nothing. I'm going to give you opportunity right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to send us a support offering. Send us a support offering. Give. Even me, myself, I give. I send support offering. You know, because this generation hates to advance the kingdom of God, they are fighting everything about giving to God's work. They say, go and give to the motherless baby home. Go and give to orphan. Go and give to widows. I don't have anything against that. But let me tell you, any orphan or widow that does not hear the gospel and dies, goes straight to hell. I'm telling you. So you see, you cannot take the place of the preacher away from the life of the orphan or the widow. Think about it. Put the offering thing there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So wherever you are, if you are in Lagos, if you are in Nigeria, anywhere in Nigeria, you can use your phone or your iPad or whatever device you use or you are using to send us an offering. You can send us our Naira local currency into GT Bank. 001-686-4121 Access Bank. 143337 Are you seeing that? Now, I want to encourage you. If you can give a hundred thousand, if you can give fifty thousand, if you can give twenty, twenty thousand, ten thousand, five thousand, two thousand, one thousand, give. Do it. Don't procrastinate. Do it. Do it. You see, this day is recorded for you and I. Be a, I'm not just talking about me. There are so many ministers who are genuinely teaching the gospel of Christ. What they just need to push the thing further is financial encouragement. Let the Lord use you to encourage them. You can use our GT Bank or our Access Bank 143337357. For. But if you are outside of Nigeria and you want to be a part of it, maybe you are in America or you are in Canada, you are in London or in anywhere in Europe, Germany or Paris in France or Holland you know, or Belgium, anywhere, Germany, anywhere, anywhere, or in Qatar, Dubai, you know, Saudi Arabia, wherever you are, in Australia or or, or China, you know. You can use our international giving platform. And the name of the bank is Guarantee Trust Bank. The SWIFT code is GTBINGLA. GTBINGLA. And the US dollar account is 001-686-4145. The Great British Pound account is 001-686-4169. And the euro account is 001-686-4179. Father, thank you for everyone who is participating in this thing right now. Wherever you are, you can give, even if it's $500 or $100, $50, you know, whatever. Just be a part of it. You can give 50 pounds, 20 pounds. You know, some people will, will take their girlfriend, you know, to go and do shopping of 100 pounds, 500 pounds for them. But to give to the kingdom of God, to finance the gospel of Jesus Christ, they will start looking for excuses. Start coming up with bitterness and anger. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because a day is coming that the day will pass, your night will come. I'm telling you, your night will surely come. And guess what? There is nothing you will take out from this world. It's a naked we came into the world. Naked we will go. We brought nothing. We will take nothing out. It is most definite. God has banned anybody, take anything out from the world as they are leaving the world. I'm telling you, I am telling you, you need to give. 
you got to give. Be a part of the workings of the kingdom of God right now. God bless you for doing so. Let me get up the airs so that you can have opportunity to use your phone or your device to send your own. You know, wherever you are in the world, just go to Play Store or Google it. Download Guaranteed Trust Bank. You know, and the Swift code is G T B I N G L A. You know, can use the dollar account, the British pound account, and the euro account to give. The Lord bless your giving and multiply your seed so. Thank you, precious Father, for this truth that has gone forth. He said, The soul has sown the seed. I've sown the seed. Father, let it fall on good grounds. Help and bless every heart that has heard this teaching right now. May the Lord turn your heart aright. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, this is AVJ, Apostle Victor James. Until I see you on the next broadcast, guess what I'm about to do? I am signing out. God bless you. Bye-bye.